And at what point does the sex part come in? So I, like I said, I was there for like three hours. And I say this in all my interviews because I'm still very bitter about it. I never got my fucking dinner. <laughs> He's, I never, we never had dinner. I'm very food motivated. I am owed a dinner. <laughs> um, and we were not drinking anything but water. I don't even think he drinks, honestly. Um, I think that was actually something we discussed. Um, and eventually I had to pee, you know? So I asked if I could use the restroom. And like I said, I get a lot of shit for for going to his hotel room. The, the general public cannot imagine that a woman, or especially one in the adult business, would go to a man's hotel room and not be expected to have sex. But it wasn't, people have this, I think, like this vision of it being like a, a hotel room with like a, it, you walk in and there's the bed. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't like that. It was a huge, it was like bigger than my first three apartments. You know what I mean? It was, it had a conference table. It had a, you know, it was, and I've had many, many business meetings in hotel rooms like that. Um, there were strictly business meetings. Um, you know, it had a living room and a kitchen and, and it was, that's not weird, especially if you're recognizable. You don't have the luxury always of having a private conversation or a business meeting in a restaurant because people are going to come up and interrupt you the whole time, which I would imagine is how his life is, is you know. And so it didn't strike me as weird. Um, my guard was up when I opened when he came to the door, obviously, and he was in the pajamas and I immediately, f you know, destroyed him verbally. But th then he was perfectly fine. We, like I said, we had a good rapport. We had a business conversation. I believe that, you know, he was genuinely interested in what I had to say. And we obviously he hatched a plan to get me on a television show uh, with his own motives, of course, which is fine. Um, and so I was completely caught off guard i told him about my family i told him where i grew up i told him that i wanted to be a director i explained all of those things to him and eventually i needed to use the ladies room and so he was like it's through the bedroom over there help yourself so that's what i did i went to the the restroom and i spent quite a bit of time in there because i'm not gonna lie i snooped <laughs> you know what i mean um which is one of the things that proves i was there i can tell you everything it's never been denied um so I, was, I i peed i touched up my lip gloss you know dug through his toiletry bag <laughs> i have i have no shame i did i mean who wouldn't right uh, i didn't steal anything though um and then when i came out he had come into the room because when i left he was in the dining room when i came out he was perched on the bed doing his best most tragic burt reynolds <laughs> And I was just like, I don't know what happened to me, but I felt like my heart fell out of my vagina. <laughs> like it just, it, you know, you people say like their heart drops to their stomach. Mine went past that. Like it just, I remember like feeling hot water in my ears. You know what I'm talking about? Like this is horrible feeling and thinking to myself, Ugh, how did I like how did I misread this situation or like ugh, here we go like another guy that's doesn't think or that thinks that because I work in porn or I'm a stripper that I, I don't know I kind of and then I it's like your soul leaves your body and I yanked it back in for a moment and tried to make a snarky funny comment because that's what I do I think I'm hilarious and when up until two years ago, yes, up until two years ago, the next thing that I remember was sidestepping and him jumping up. Now, he never threatened me. He never put his hands on me. Um, I do remember glancing and remembering that his bodyguard was standing right outside the door. Like, what am I going to do? Um, and then I blacked out. And I think that when I first told the story, people misconstrued that when I say blacked out, that I passed, like that I had been drinking. So I'm so adamant. There was no drugs. There was no alcohol. There was none of that. Um, and I just woke up on the bed naked with him fucking me, which there's an extreme loss of time there of about um, at least two minutes, perhaps as little as 60 seconds, because I distinctly remember what I was wearing and I'm telling you, the shoes I had on were these gold sandals with like a bunch of little buckles, like high heels. 
they were off. They're not easy to get on and off. So I have, I don't remember taking them off or how they got off or if I did it, if he did it, I literally kind of had like an out of body experience or something like that. And then, so I, it was, I, and it was weird because we were on this side, like the bathroom door and the bed. So you would think that we would be here, but somehow my clothes and stuff were on this side of the bed and we were on this side you know what I mean? And because we were by the window and I don't know how I got there. I legit don't know how I got there. The next thing I know is he was having sex with me and I never said no, um, but I didn't say yes either. And I and then up until two years ago. And this is not something that I have talked about a lot because obviously most of the book and the interviews and stuff was longer than two years ago. I went to see... Um, me and my ex went to see that movie, um, Bombshell. Okay. And there's, you know, and I, I didn't think I would, I hate to use the word triggered, ugh, but, um, it was in that movie that uh, all the rest of it came back. And I remember standing there and, when I went to sidestep him jumping up, which I've always remembered, but this is something I never understood why the press, the editor, there's a gap in the book. Like everything is so detailed. I can tell you where, what pocket on his toiletry bag, his gold plated tweezers were in and what brand shampoo he uses and, and what exactly I was wearing. But the, I don't know how my dress and shoes got off. Like no one thought to like push me harder for that. Like I, how did that slip through? And like, no one, I've been interviewed by time and Rolling Stone and nobody was like, wait, so you just, you know what I mean? But now I do remember that I was standing there and I went to sidestep and he got up and I was like, what are you doing? And he basically used my, you don't want to go back to Louisiana. Like if you really want to be a director and be taken serious, people who work for me, they got to really go all out. You got to show me you'll do whatever it takes. Cause there's a lot of people fighting for the same thing and people are hungry. And I just, I didn't, that's what I wanted. And it wasn't until I watched that movie at the end where the main characters are talking about how, um, if she had spoke up, she's by not speaking up, she's responsible for everybody who came after her. And in my case, it just, I remember sitting in the movie theater and just, my poor date was like, what the fuck is with this crazy bitch? Cause I was fine. And then I just lost it. Like I just lost it. I started like blowing snot bubbles in the movie theater because it's, it's true. If I had said something, maybe the people who got violated, assaulted, whatever word, put in an uncomfortable position, whatever word you want to use um, after me, I'm not saying that they all wouldn't have happened, but at least they maybe would have been informed. And what breaks my heart is I now know that <clears throat> one of the girls that came after me was a 13 year old girl. Wait, 13 year old girl was, that's the one that I don't know her name, but uh, that claimed that something happened between her and Trump and they threatened her and she dropped it. Came after you, meaning what a, a certain amount of time later? That yeah, same yeah. day? No, 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 okay, no, no, not a certain amount of time. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Years later, years later. Well, you know, I mean, to play devil's advocate, most porn girls escort. Of not, not everyone. I'm not saying, you know, you, you're in that bunch, no. but when you look at porn as a whole, of most girls, whether they call it a sugar daddy or whether and I'm they're fine actually, with that. you I'm know, totally fine with it. put ads out or whatever, most, most porn girls escort. Of course. So I don't think it's an unreasonable assumption that hey this this working porn star mm -hmm. comes over to my you know hotel room i'm gonna pay her we're gonna have sex what? and we're gonna go our separate ways well he never and... paid me either so he never paid you <laughs> no okay he never offered to pay no, you no like absolutely that? not seems like it would have been easier if he just did that as of opposed course. to trying to sell you a dream and, uh, and the 100%, whole percent, 100 percent, and then i would have been able to say yes or no right um i will be completely honest with you at that point it's i was so naive this is it never came up and I expected it to. I really did. I was like, he's going to offer me money. And part of me was like, I wonder how much he thinks I'm worth. <laughs> like, that's just me being brutally honest. I was I mean, curious. Were you escorting at all no, at that time? Okay. absolutely not. Got it. Absolutely not. And if he would have offered, I would have said, no, thank you. Um, But I have no problem with it. 
all my friends are escorts. I, you know, right. like I. That's I've, what I'm saying. Yes, absolutely no problem. But not only was it not discussed, it was, you know what I mean, or implied in any way. Like there wasn't even footsie under the table. He didn't seem remotely attracted to me um, at all, honestly, yeah, once we got to talking. And, um, and then if that was, and if that had been the case, he didn't be like, how much do I owe you? Or thank you for your time. There was no transaction, which is one of the things that really upsets me is because if that had been the case, uh, this would not be a problem. You don't, you don't sell out a client. I, I read tarot cards. Now I, I have clients that I, I do work with. It's the same. Like you don't discuss that, you know? Um, it's a business transaction. You were, you've agreed to do something and this wouldn't be a thing. Yeah. 